Clever one today is Thursday, September 30th. How'd that happen? <laughs> 2021. It is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Thanks for taking the effort to find the show. It's not always that easy. So what are we talk about? Well, current market conditions, I'm going to have a whole lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, feel free to ask anything you want. If you don't mind, keep them on the slides and we'll get to the live charts, just some ADD and kick in. We'll, you can ask about anything you want then. And also hold off until we get the live charts for your stock picks. And on those, as usual, just ask about one at a time so I know what I covered and what I haven't. I updated this last minute as though those, those of you who were here a little earlier probably saw me. I want to continue the trading stuff thing I've been doing lately. And then one thing that I woke up thinking about a lot today is the power of the Landry light and how it could help to keep it in the right side of the market. And that'll all make a lot of sense, a lot more sense in a few minutes for those of you who aren't familiar with it. There's flame screen as you know you can lose money trading was off the summon up. All pictures are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Stole that from Greg Morris. <laughs> So I've been talking about this trading stuff in for a long, long time here, several months at least. And basically, I, I'm very cognizant of what I'm doing, especially like the emotions nowadays, but also in the money management, taking profits, not taking profits. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I did or did not do, uh, or should have done, I should say, in a few minutes. And I think it's gonna make me a better trader. And then the more you can kind of look over my shoulder, shoulder metaphorically, I think, the better you'll be. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about also is market timing, given the situation with the overall market. So I wanna talk about that in a simplified manner with the Landry Light and of course the TFM system. Before we do that, as I say ad nauseum, market timing is less about beating the market and more about not letting the market beat you. So it's okay, and as I've said a thousand times, as Greg Morris has said, whipsaws are frustrating, bear markets are devastating, you could survive frustration. So we need to get ahead of this, and we need to do it now. And a few weeks ago, I did a presentation called Before the Bomb Blows Up, and you can find that in the members area on the website. If you are a free member of DaveLander.com, you should be able to access that. You'll just need to log on to do so. If you're a gold member or a service member, which includes gold for free now, then you can check out that webinar and I would encourage you to do so. The problem is, as I often say, the reason I said before the bomb blows up is people, especially like in the pandemic last February when the market started taking the pandemic seriously, after certain people, friends and relatives were down about 30, 40%, they called me crying. It's like, well, the bomb's already blown up. It's kind of too late now. So it's not about saying, oh, I got in here and I got out there and I beat the market by X percent or whatever. And if you did have a system that was just unbelievably amazing, what you'd probably find out is in real time, you would not be as impressed. So something simple, something that's, that's not going to knock your socks off, but conceptually correct can work really well and it amazes me how well it can work and i don't know exactly when i published this tfm 10 percent system but it's been a while and it's been working pretty darn good since then but as i say ad nauseum avoiding the occasional 50 percent haircut is key but dave how often does the market lose 50 percent of its value well a lot more than it should on a statistical basis as you know markets are not normally distributed the old fat tail rears its ugly head, the, the Talib black swan, so to speak. I keep a black swan greeting card on my trading desk to remind me that it can happen. Spell with Solomon and Sage. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm probably going to say shit by the end of this presentation anyway. Uh, <laughs> my favorite for back in the hedge fund days, he who fights the runs away and lives to fight another day. As I preach, Regardless of your system, focus on the downside magnitude. And I call the downside magnitude, stealing a phrase from Ian McActivy. He's no longer with us. But as I said, a nausea, he gives unbelievable, well, he used to give unbelievably funny presentations. <laughs> and 
I don't know how he found the stuff that he found, but it's just amazing. Anyway, he would call it the diaper change moment when the shit would hit the fan in markets. So you want to avoid those diaper change moments as best as possible. And you have to look at the downside magnitude versus mechanical si signals in and of themselves. A couple of weeks back, I gave the example of the death cross, the death cross, where the 50 crosses below the 200 and it's the end of the world, right? Well, not exactly. And longer term, I think Rob Hanna has done the testing on it, and 4% seems to stick in my head. It was a very minuscule edge, not enough to trade. However, Sometimes you had a death cross and the market might drop 50% and it might come back 50% or I guess, guess would have to come back 100% and then the whole thing ends up being a scratch if you'd have just stayed in, right? Well, that'll work until it don't. And you wanna look at the magnitude and then maybe look for certain things to get you back in a little bit earlier. One of my clients was telling me he thought I was a little late getting in after the pandemic. Maybe I was, I guess we're still in the pandemic, huh? Damn thing won't go away. But that was just because I wasn't seeing a whole lot of setups and eventually I started seeing setups. And I think it had something to do with the way the market kind of did a big old do-over, but trust me, it won't always do that. So I just wanted to update you on the TF10, the TFM 10% system. I wanna update a few things and more specifically, just kind of look at where we are now and that's kind of how I started off today. I wanted to look at where we were or now. And then I said, you know, it'd probably be good to go in and look at the last couple of years and then maybe the last 10 years. So there's a sell signal with the pandemic. Very simple, simple system. I can't imagine anything much easier. Basically, you sell any time a market gets more than 10% away from its closing high, which let me back this up, which was right here. This is the all-time closing high. So this line is 90% of the, not all time, but 50 week closing high. And because this market did not go down and bottom out over a period of weeks to months, this green line didn't catch up with price. If you go in and look at, let's say the bear market of 2000, where it, it, it bottomed out between 2000, 2003, this line, was not way up here at all time highs, it had started to ratchet down quite a bit. And so you got in a lot earlier. But anyway, this signal turned out to be what's called whipsaw, but it was a very valid signal. And I'm gonna flesh that out in just a second. And you could see you bought in last July. Now that seems a little late, but there were other things triggering and we started seeing some setups before that and alongside obviously and some leftover shorts for a while and i've done presentations on all that if you go way back to last summer you could see all those but anyway if you look at where we are now and we're a little bit lower than where we were earlier today and usually i use cash right here i just use it to spiders you could actually trade the spiders obviously but cash will give you the same reading or close enough for government work. But you can see that the 50 week, this is a 50 week moving average, okay? And the 10% line are getting pretty close together, kind of like they did over here, as you can see, caught up to price. So a close below the green line, a red line, or a close below the green line was pretty much below the moving average. And that would be your exit. Remember the entry, is close above the green line and this is that the buy is actually right here it's a few days earlier a few weeks earlier i should say about three weeks earlier this arrow needs to be right here but you need to be above the green line in other words within 10 percent of the 50-week closing high and you need two weeks of landry light meaning that the lows are greater than the moving average and i'm going to beat the dead horse on landry light in just one second down here, this just tells you how far away you are from the closing high. So you can see that anything above this 10% means that you are getting further away from that closing high. And a 10% drop is a pretty substantial drop. You may wanna pay attention to the market and start thinking about getting out, not on an individual issue basis. 
and I'm going to flesh that out a little bit this week, and we'll follow up in subsequent weeks. But last week, we talked about that, too. You never know if one or more of your positions will defy gravity and take off. And I'll show you one of those in just a few minutes. But anyway, the point I'd like to show you here is even if this thing stopped out, it's been a pretty good run. It's actually a little bit lower than that because, again, I'm when I eyeballed the signal earlier, it's a it's about two weeks earlier, the actual signal. Now I thought it'd be interesting to go back over the last 10 years and look at, and I do have the spreadsheet, by the way, going all the way back to the 20s, okay? And that's where you have a diaper change. The diaper change is over here. This is how far it drops after the signal, okay? So it's got to drop 10% to get to the signal from the 50-week closing highs. And then this is how far at its maximum it drops afterwards. So this little pandemic drop, which turned to a big do-over, and the aforementioned people who call me freaking out are like, well, I'm glad I held on. It's like, well, good for you. That'll work until it don't. So there was a bit of a whipsaw back in the pandemic slide. Now we had a buy going back a few years in 2010, and then there was sell right here. We had another buy in 2012, and then a sell was right here in 2015. One in 2016, one in 2019, and a buy sub subsequently after that. And obviously the sell off during the pandemic is right here. And again, that was a whip, that was a whipsaw, you might say, but I don't know. It's pretty hard to sleep. And I know a few people in particular, I doubt seriously they were sleeping very well when they're down 30%. And this thing looks like there's no end in sight. And then that's that last little run we just talked about. Now, going back to 2010, that was a pretty good run there. That was okay. And this could be considered a whipsaw and the diaper change was only 3%. So not very impressive there. But this run here was pretty darn good. You could see it ran from 100 to almost 200. So that was about a 100% run. That's pretty good. And we have them all in the spreadsheet. This is another whipsaw filter. You can see it sold off, then it bought in a slightly higher. But if you think about it, you really didn't lose much by if you were trading the system in and of itself because you pretty much got out here and got back in here, not much difference there. And you only avoided a 4% drop. So it wasn't worth it on that one, but you never know when it's gonna be the real one. And as I've said before, and Greg Morse says similar things, we treat all signals as if they will be the big one. Take them seriously. So this run was not too bad. And then there was another whipsaw with 11% diaper change. And then of course, the 30% slide round numbers after the sell signal, and it did recover. Well, it's okay to give up a little bit of that upside as long as you're avoiding 50% or more on the downside. And never forget, as I, alluded to earlier, if you lose 50% of your money, how much money do you have to make back? Well, you have to make back 100% of your money, and that's not always that easy. So again, the last little run was pretty good in here, or not too bad, I should say. And as you can see, it's when you squint your eyes and get further back, it does look like we are a little bit closer to it than in the chart zoomed in. So just one of several signals we need to pay attention to. We're going to take a look at the daily bow ties and the live charts when we get there. And now it's time for Stay in the light. The light is good. So my favorite moving average, at least now, and I know you probably want to party with me, right? <laughs> is the 30 EMA. And when I was doing a little Landry light analysis a couple of weeks ago, or let's just say when the market got a little iffy, whenever it was, about a week or so ago, I was amazed that we had 
mostly green for a long, 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 long time. In fact, the first downside Landry light that we had was just recently when we turned red. And we only had one shoe bars of downside Landry light. And you kind of have to squint your eyes to see them on the charts right there. And then I think this one is just, I almost said something vulgar, a, a tiny bit <laughs> from my sailing days. We have, uh, when you want to bring the sheet in a tiny bit, we have a term for that. I'm sure some of you guys know it if you're sailors. But anyway, I was pretty amazed that there was so little red for such a long, long time going all the way back to November. Now, just again, Landry Light lows are greater than moving average for uptrends. And for downtrends, the highs are less than the moving average. Pick your favorite moving average, exponential or simple. We'll take a look at both. Yeah, there you go, John. John knows what it is. <laughs> well, it's a it's a specific type of of yeah, just a hair, but it's a specific type of hair, which I don't want to demonetize things and offend anybody. But you can see we now are starting to get a little bit of downside Landry light. Now, again, not to beat the dead horse, but somebody's going to ask me. I promise you. This just tells you the number of days it's been since you've crossed the moving average. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's an owl outside my window. And he's saying, whoo, whoo. <laughs> but anyway, these are the number of days, not the magnitude, but you can see it was up about 40 something days here. And then it made a little kiss to the moving average. So there's no Landry light. And then it starts climbing up again. And as I show you in one minute, these little kisses of, of the moving average with some caveats can actually be a pretty good signal. So if we look a little further back in time, and I know you want to party with me, but this should get you excited. And, and this excites me when I can see something so simple. I mean, you have to realize how much grail hunting I've done and how much just staying up late, late, late at night and waking up early programming, trading systems, trying to figure out the holy grail. And then I've come full circle to just something really, 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 really simple. Now, but hey, that looks like some kind of crazy indicator. Not really, it's just telling you what's already in the chart. Look, land your life from here to here. So this is how many days, okay? And it's something that I asked uh, Metastock to do years ago when they were doing my indicators. And I didn't know what it would look like. And I said, well, let's just count how many days. And then before you know, I'm like, well, that's a really cool little thing. And it's such a great visual representation. And it could also give you a, a 30,000 foot view. And maybe what you might want to do to get a 100,000 foot view is change it to a weekly chart and see how that shapes up. And if we get time in a little while, we'll do that. I listen to my recordings of this. I'm always like, well, I have time and we'll do this. And never seen to do it. So just remind me if that's something you want to see. But anyway, you could see it got choppy back here. It didn't come apart, but you did have some red. So you want to be cautious, some red, some green, some red, you know, flip it back and forth. You know, the market is kind of choppy and you might want to send your hands and sideways. When you see a substantial amount of green and you can say maybe 10 days or more on the upside, then you might have a trend developing. By the way, you could be a little slower to get long a market because the an overall market, not an individual stock. As the saying goes, markets take the escalator up and the elevator down. Okay. Kind of like the little, what's the little man? Price is right. You know, I often say this, you know. Do -do 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 <laughs> Hopefully we're not in another. So bigger picture wise, it's not the end of the world, but it is cause for some concern. So this is just, again, a 30 EMA. And I eyeball this, but I'm starting to like this little, I hate to call it an indicator because it doesn't indicate anything, but it illustrates, I like this little illustrator to show me how much Landry light we've had up or down. Any chance Telecharts is gonna have Landry light indicator, can we help by requesting? 
Yeah, I suppose you could request it. Um, I don't know if, if this is something that would lend itself to uh, the telechart or now. Telechart is, is my quick and dirty go-to for looking at a plethora of charts quickly. And a little bit more detailed analysis like we're doing now is something that I would use ACP or Metastock for. I've done quite a few presentations where I do the Tarzan speak, you know, good when you have the green, bad when you have the red. And it could be quite, quite simple. Now, when you're in the middle of the market's getting chewed up or losing money, then it could be of some concern. But you could see this whole period of time, it was mostly good. A few, just a few periods of red where you might have to be concerned. Now, one thing that amazed me was whenever the market begins to spill a little bit, by the way, I dust off the 50 day simple moving average. I usually don't plot it, but when the market gets a little iffy, you'll start seeing it more and more, especially like in my trading service every night. And just for fun, and again, I know you probably want to party with me, but just for fun, I went in and did a 50-day Landry light, and this is something that the programmer added, which is kind of cool. You could change it from an exponential moving average to a simple moving average. And in some cases, simple moving averages are pretty cool because they're a little slow to catch up, and sometimes you want a little lag in the moving average, believe it or not. But when you're using a system that's price space, even though it's a moving average, okay, you're not sitting around waiting for a moving average crossover, which by the time something crosses over, it might be too late. The, the bear market might be over by then. What you're doing here is the price space indicator. And this combined with the 10% line, to my surprise, actually triggered, it's a weekly longer term signal. It actually triggered, as I've said before a thousand times, during the pandemic slide before we even had a weekly, I mean, a daily bow tie. But anyway, what amazed me was you go all the way back to last November using a 50-day simple moving average, and it was all green. Now, there was a couple times where the market intersected the moving average, okay, but it came back without any red Landry light. You got to go all the way back to, like I said, November to see some red in the Landry light. So that's a long time. And by the way, the one thing I wanted to mention earlier, if you go in, if you watch the recording of this, I know I can't sleep at night, I guess, right? As Greg Moore says about his stuff jokingly, but uh, I say it too about my stuff. <laughs> Just don't operate heavy machinery after viewing, right? But it's really not that many signals. We had one buy signal when last year, and then we are possibly closing in on a buy signal, but it might be five years before, I'm a sell signal, I should say. But it might be another five years before we have another sell signal. So we'll have to wait and see with the TFM 10% system. Now, looking at this, it's, there's nothing to worry about since last November, right? I know, ha, ha, But now we're starting to get a little red. It's not the end of the world, okay? Don't sell the form. You might want to have it appraised, but don't sell it just yet. But do pay attention to what's going on, and let's see if, it begins to materialize. And again, there was no red during that entire period. It was amazing to me, at least. And now we're starting to get a little bit of red to the downside. So we have to pay attention to that. Now, earlier, this is really amazing. Of course, it's kind of dangerous to give the market maybe that much room. But if you were a long, 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 long term trend following, I think it's pretty darn cool that you can go all the way back to last summer, and I'll have to back it up a little bit further, but I think June, maybe mid-June or early June, and there was no downside Landry light during that entire period with the 200-day simple moving average. Now, you can get pretty far away from the moving average, and that would hurt pretty bad going all the way down. But if you were somehow able to take a long, long-term view and you got in the market in the 3,000s and it's up here in the 5,000s, well, you can survive a little bit of a sell-off down to that moving average. I would caution you and, and say maybe you might want to use the TFM 10% system or something else and get you out a little bit earlier 
because that's going to help you fight and run away. Something slow like this, not that there's any guarantee that the market can't crash from new highs, but I think Greg Morris has done some research to where a market doesn't crash from brand new highs. It tends to sell off for a little while first. And who knows, it might not happen in the future, but something like the TFM 10 persistent sit system, easy for me to say, got you out before the Great Depression. I, don't, I think a few of you here are old enough to remember that. I'm half kidding. Uh, it won't be long before I'm old enough. <laughs> start, people start to treat me like an old person now, like, oh shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> but anyway, if you have a signal that's a little bit more, I don't know what word to use, robust maybe, it'll get you out a little bit more quicker. But it is kind of interesting that the 200 day moving average would keep you in some amazing trends using the concept of Landry Light. And as I said before, it works in all markets. And this is Bitcoin. And you can see it was green for a while, red for a while, went green again. And now we've got to deal with some more red. Okay. And then, of course, eyeball the chart. There's no buy or sell in here that I could see for now in Bitcoin, maybe in some of the some of the SHYT coins, some of the shit coins, but not many. And by the way, Bitcoin hasn't, or crypto hasn't been fantastic as of late, in case you were wondering. I tend to make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little. In other words, just kind of grind it out. I've only have a few positions on right now. But you can see we now have some downside Landry light. And it's uh, interesting. I don't know if anyone has done this, but it'd be kind of fun. And again, you probably want to party with me. But on stock charts, you could plot in the old stock charts, at least. I don't know if it works in the ACP. I think it might. But you could plot, let's say, dollar sign SPX colon and then dollar sign BTC USD. It'd be kind of interesting to see what relationship Bitcoin has with the stock market. And right now, it seems to me, since we're in a bit of a liquidation market, at least at times, that Bitcoin for now is following suit with the stock market. And you can see we get a little red. We get a little red over here. Now, during that big green phase, as I showed you in prior webinars, and I did play a lot of this, and I do remember being long. I remember getting long this signal here, the Landry Light pullback, and I remember it coming all the way back in. I'm like, oh boy, this kind of sucks. And then fortunately, it took off again. And then I did buy into some of these subsequent rallies. And you can see that this last one here came below the moving average. So I wouldn't consider that a signal anymore. And once you start getting downside Landry Light, it's more than just a pullback to the EMA. So really simple system, uh, just in case you're wondering, keeping score, 10 to 20 bars, 10 is gonna give you more signals, 20 is a little bit more conservative, but you also need to look at the magnitude of the move higher. You don't always wanna wait for it to come all the way back to the moving average, but if you're just talking about this setup, 10 to 20 bars above the moving average, lows above the moving average, in other words, green land your light, and then a pullback to the moving average and look to get long if and only if the trend begins to resume. And I don't think it gets much simpler than that. And I see a couple of new guys come into the to the Facebook group or newer to trading, and they're trying to figure out everything in the world. And I've seen this for the past 20 something years. And they're just sponges trying to figure out this indicator and that indicator and all this other stuff. And I would encourage them to tap the brakes a little bit and just find something stupid simple like Landry Light pullbacks and trade that. As I often preach, if you can't trade one pattern, you're not gonna be able to trade 10. And as Linda Rasky once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And I firmly believe that. And sometimes I wish I would go back to trading just one pattern when I'm in a bit of a drawdown. As I've been saying over the past several weeks, when we went 49 days set up to set up, I said, I'd be willing to bet that one of the next five stocks that I recommend will turn into a big winner. So here are the trades. There's one, there's two, and there's three. We talked about these last week. And ALIT is still on. That's got stopped out. We'll take a look at that one in just one second, but I, I might have a little left and I'll show you why. 
And then YMM so far is fairly miserable. So I'm hoping, and I know you should never hope, okay? But I'm hoping that one of these will turn a huge winner and make it all worthwhile. So number four and number five, and I'm gonna show you the two setups there in just one second. John says, Facebook group can be overwhelming for a newbie, so many different styles, need to stay focused. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, you have to, you can't follow everyone. And I know there's some of you guys are a lot more active than the others, and you might be day trading and you've got your own little patterns, and that's great. I'm glad you're bringing things up for us to look at. But if you're newer to trading, you can't follow, you can't immediately follow everyone in the group. And John, I know who, you just brought this up. John works, does a lot of IPOs, and he's sort of our resident IPO guru. And if you're interested in IPOs, then I would suggest listening to what John says, because he finds a lot of good IPOs. And I try to throw out as many as I can, too. And I think I talked about that in the group before it actually became an official recommendation to service. So here's the question. That's cheating as far as my next five. Now, initially I got in back here to buy a B plus one. I have an unwritten rule that I won't buy an IPO less than $5 share. At least I've seemed to get burnt quite a bit on these. And when it began to really break out after the buy at B pattern triggered, I decided to go ahead and, and buy in. It subsequently rallied. I took some profits along the way, some partial profits had pulled back. And then I recommended a trading service. And I did take the new trade here and did an add on because I already had shares. But I did a big add on. And I did take the IPT at this level here. Now it hit the IPT and came back in to the entry. My line's not perfect there, but you can see right around where we entered. And technically it stopped out. And if you're following things mechanically, that would absolutely be a stop out. I stayed with it two reasons, I suppose. One was because I'm trading from a position of strength because I already had a lot of shares on earlier and already flipped out shares. It was already free rolling from an earlier trade, came in with a new trade, it was free rolling on that trade. And I'm willing to give up some open profits, as Curtis Face said in the way of the turtle, and boy, I tell you, I'm going back on what I said. I said I would never read those turtle books, and I'm actually reading the complete turtle trader <laughs> to see if there's any nuggets in there. But I did like Curtis' Facebook, as I said before. Larry McMillan told me to read it because well, he was talking about it. He said, ah, it's pretty good. They had a ping pong table in the back, and they played ping pong, as I said a hundred times before. My old office, I could have put a ping pong table in. I wish I would have, but uh, this one is just uh, way too small. I guess that's what downsizing is all about. But anyway, I still have a position here. Now, I got kind of greedy yesterday. This thing was up three and a half points. That's a huge gain, like 30% in one day. And I did not, one of my clients said, did you take any shares off? I, I did, he was getting excited and it got me excited. I did take a couple of day trades that, that made a little bit of money, not much, but a little bit of money. But I kind of missed the bigger picture here. It, you're up 40% in one day or 37% in one day. It's probably not a bad idea to peel off a few shares, especially since, in my case, cost basis is down in the, in the not low single digits, but $5 and change or whatever. Plus, my add-on trade is still is 100% uh, away or 50% away at nine bucks a share or whatever it was. So I may have gotten greedy. I don't know if it's cheating counting this one. By the way, I don't know if this is cheating, counting this one as a, one of the five big winners, but it did turn into a big winner so far, and it did come back right back in after shooting higher. Whenever you're grabbing your calculator or whenever you're feeling good and looking at how many thousands you're up, take some of that money <laughs> off the table. So I probably should have taken a little off. Now, the, the thing I was talking about earlier back here, I got sidetracked, imagine that, is that according to Curtis Faith in the way of the turtle, Dennis, Richard Dennis was lenient when it comes to open profits. And I heard somebody else 
say that one of the turtles or several turtles had a hard time because the um, dentist wouldn't let them take profits or encourage them not to take profits. And they'd have these huge, 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 huge profits. So part of my thinking back here is I'm willing to let an open trade go against me. And I'm also willing to let, and it's painful, I don't know, and I hate to do it. it, it believe me, it sucks that I drop F-bombs. But sometimes I get in a trade, if I get that IPT out, my stops at break even, sometimes I'll let it go a little bit past that break even, just in case it does one little shake out. And of course, I do have an uncle point in mind. So I am a little bit lenient. I don't want the whole trade to turn into a loss, but I am willing to let it go a little bit against me, okay? And that's a little bit more advanced trading. If you're new to trading, follow everything as mechanically as possible. And then yesterday, I didn't want to bail on this position because just in case it just kept on running, okay? So it's like well, it was up three and a half points, four points, whatever it was, maybe it'll keep on running. <laughs> TOS had it wrong this morning, showed it up six bucks or earlier today. I was getting excited again, like here we go again. But anyway, so I don't know if that's cheating or not counting dats, but this is the setup going into tomorrow. This would be the fourth trade recommended we'll see if it triggers if it doesn't trigger then no capital is put into harm's way as i often say and you can see this is a ip it's actually an ipo it's had a nice run higher and a nice little pullback here huge fan of ipos you're like dave why are you recommending stocks when the market's a little iffy it's like well an ipo could trade higher in lieu of the the overall market sometimes not all the times but sometimes and a lot of times if the market gets really really nasty you won't get an entry so i have liberal entries on these and i know by the way i know a few of you guys have been front running things a little bit and that's fine but this is not a market where you really want to be front running stuff and so this would be the next setup this is also what i consider an ipo or as a toddler as i often call them but it's had a nice run higher and it's pulled back and i think it looks like it has potential. You might, I've talked about pullbacks to prior breakouts and how I don't like that pattern much, but this thing has made such an incredible run higher. I'm okay with this little deep pullback that it made. And again, wait for entries. This is a slide left over from last week. I haven't gotten around to actually putting out the blog post, but just like those five trades I talked about earlier, I wanna do a project where I have 12 trading tickets and I, ha and I have up to 12 months to spend them. I don't have to spend them all. I can wait 11 months and spend one or two or spend them all in one day if everything looks good. But I'm anxious to see how this is gonna turn out. And this line of reasoning comes from Warren Buffett, not that I'm a Buffett fan. And I, I gotta be careful because if I say something bad about Buffett, I'm gonna get all kind of hate mail and everything. but I don't think value investing days are, are are here again. I think that's kind of come and gone, at least for a long time. And the other thing too is Mr. Buffett does a, Mr. Buffett does a lot of things that aren't exactly value investing and a lot of derivative stuff. And and I don't want to get into a whole lot about it, but I, I knew someone who worked for a Buffett company once, and uh, he he had a little bit of the insight on it. I also heard that he sold a shit ton of puts and that doesn't sound like a a simple strategy and that'll work until it don't he thought the market was low and you know he he got out okay but if you get bored plot really bored plot berkshire hathaway and look at the drawdowns not that i don't have ugly drawdowns but the recovery is pretty ugly on those and and for all intents and purposes i think any hedge fund would be considered a blown up if it drew down as much as 50% or more like some of the Buffett drawdowns. But anyway, you know, you can't take it away. He's a billionaire, I'm not, so. <laughs> I'm working on it though, I'm trying. Anyway, 12 tickets, 12 months, I think it'll be fun. So every time you take a trade, you spend a ticket. So you gotta make sure it's worth spending. I probably should come up with uh, one for intraday trading, so I'm not making so many trades all day. I used to preach against day trading and now I do a little day trading. 
but that's either here or there. We'll, we talked about that in prior presentations. So the question is, why not bail in everything when things get iffy? Well, if you take a look at the ARLP, this is today's, I, I was kind of shocked when I looked at it because I didn't, I didn't look at the chart intraday. I saw it was up a little earlier in the day, but I didn't really pay attention. And we got in way back here, I guess late last year it triggered in or early this year it triggered in, initial profit target, and immediately began to implode. But notice that it didn't go below the stop. And then it went sideways for a while, and you're probably wondering, dead money, should I get out? Took off again, but then it went sideways for a while, and you're probably thinking, dead money, should I get out? Sideways again, sold off fairly hard, and of course, this last little spill here, which kind of looks like a TKO, by the way, and then it's taken off one last time. Whoops, I hope that's not a Freudian slip. Hopefully that one last time, hopefully one time of many. So I did have a decent day today, and this is why you don't bail out. Now, I showed the portfolio at about 28K coming into the slide, and last week it was almost back to break even, and it's a little bit lower this week. And I'll follow up in subsequent weeks because I've got a snapshot before the slide. If you need to look at those, or, or again, if you can't sleep at night, and you want to see the methodology in action and see what I said ahead of time, so it doesn't look like, oh, yeah, you're, that's fine, Dave, that's in hindsight, you know. But if you go in and look at the archives, davelander.com slash archives, you can see all my recommendations. All right, let's go to live charts. Uh, you guys want to ask about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. Let me get the charts all set up. Let's start with the P's. P's had a pretty ugly day. I tell you, S&P E-minis is a tough market. I'm, you know, at the end of the day, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, how come I didn't make a shit ton of money today? I mean, I made money in the P's, but I should have made a lot more. <laughs> but it's always, you know, in hindsight, it's always it always looks a lot easier, I guess, if you take a look. Just looking at well, 10 minutes, I meant to put a 15, but let's just see. You know, it just wasn't a route. You know, it dropped and then it, big rally and knocks you out. And then, it, of course, it drops again and looks like a reversal. But anyway, before I digress too far, notice that we're the bow ties are in downtrend proper order, meaning that the, the 10 is below the 20 EMA, 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. And as importantly, or something else to pay attention to, we're at multi-month lows on a closing basis, lowest level since July. So that's important, the net-net, right? Let's throw in the 50-day simple moving average. And next week, I'll talk a little bit about proper water to bow ties and how that can keep you on the right side of the market too. You can see they've been in proper water since June. And they had a few little crossings here and there, but for the most part, proper order all the way back to last November. You're gonna find what trend following, even though I'm super proud of, of what I've done, you're gonna find that a lot of stuff looks alike, okay? So if you're using bow tie proper order or Landry Light or your own little longer term or intermediate term trend stuff, it's all gonna start looking looking the same after a while and there's going to be some nuances here and there but for the most part it's going to look quite similar as far as the results because bow tie proper order for the most part going all the way back to last november ema 30 ema landry light upside ema landry lights going back to last november 50 day simple going back a little bit further but roughly sometimes last fall so they're all gonna look alike after a while. And I just use a couple things, bow tie proper order and Landry light, and that's pretty much it. And of course, the big blue arrow is first and foremost. Now, NASDAQ didn't get hit too hard today, but it was still down a half a percent. And what's concerning here is you draw your line and we're, we're back to the middle of last summer, okay? And also notice that, especially when we get a bow tie, and I think drugs did this recently, we'll take a look at that in one second. But when your bow tie moving averages intersect the 50 at a sharp angle, usually that's time to pay attention. And that's what we're seeing now. And again, it's not the end of the world, but we definitely need to pay attention to what's happening. 
the Russell's all over the place. I'm sick of talking about the Russell. I just like to see it get out of this base and not to the downside. If it breaks to the downside, it's going to be a plethora of overhead supply, and that's going to be of concern. Conversely, if it breaks to the upside, that would obviously be a good thing. Energy is one of the few areas hanging in there, doing pretty good as a general statement, but we really haven't taken out the prior highs in here. Metals and mining on the flip side has been saying quite a bit, not looking too pretty. Bow tie, downtrend, proper order there. Gold and silver has been leading the market lower. So by the way, write this down. Yes, today was okay, right? But last couple of days in gold, especially on the big sell-offs, when gold goes lower and the market goes lower and bonds go lower as the market goes lower, you're in what's called a liquidation market. And notice that bonds have imploded quite a bit as of late. Bowtie downtrend, proper order now, okay? We could see a little setup here. It's not off all-time lows, but it's off of eh, maybe one-year lows. So I would pay attention to that signal. Now, one thing I was looking at tonight, as you go through a bunch of sectors, and I'm not going to bore you with them too much. I know, too late. You notice that a lot of them are breaking down below those moving averages. So now you got downside Landry Light and you got downside proper order. So that's a little bit concerning. And some of the stronger areas, it's kind of becoming the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So you've got, again, downtrend proper order here 10, less than 20, less than 30, and then the 50. Also start to pay attention to the slope of the moving average. Upslope, good. Downslope, bad. Now remember, an EMA, whether it's a 5 EMA, a 10 EMA, or a 500 EMA, as I said a thousand times, thanks to Greg Morris, who taught me, it will change direction as soon as the market changes direction. Notice the 20 up here turned down. Why? Well, price closed below it. Squint your eyes, you can see that the 30 EMA turned down. Why? Price closed below it, okay? So price closed below the 50 here, but the 50 keeps kind of cranking along. And slowly but surely, it does begin to roll over. In fact, in this case, it's kind of starting to roll over fairly quickly. That's a little bit of concern. This is the pattern I was telling you about earlier. When you have the bow tie coming into the 50 simple moving average, you can search my YouTube channel for bow ties if you're watching this video. I hate when people talk about stuff and they don't disclose. I disclose everything as you as you I always hate that as you may or may not know what what what, what is that but anyway drugs not looking too good in here looks like a major top or major place there biotech's all over the place but not looking so hot i'm kind of bearish on biotech right now health services break it down as you can see we could get a bow tie down here soon this was one of the stronger areas this this is a bummer because no matter what was happening in the overall market, it just kept chugging along and chugging along and chugging along. So again, as you go through these manufacturing, breaking down in earnest, you're seeing more and more, 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 more and more bow ties in more and more areas breaking down. Well, hey, why are you still recommending in longs? Well, there's a couple, like I said, that I'm recommending. I just showed you the two setups there, and they're just IPOs, and I think they have potential. And again, not to beat the dead horse, imagine that, me beating the dead horse. But I think that if the market starts imploding and implodes in earnest and everything gets sold off, like we've seen a few days ago, then they won't trigger, okay? And as long as I'm seeing decent looking setups, I'll probably continue to recommend them, but that's gonna go away pretty quick if the market changes the slide. So don't think I'm being obstinate. I'm just not seeing a whole lot of shorts I wanna take on just yet. I did shorts. New core today, NUE, which was on the Landry list, is a Russian doll setup. I think I made a point or two, and one of you guys kind of goaded me into it. <laughs> Why are you shooting futures? Why don't you short new core and futures and see what happens? Like, all right, I'll do that. Anyway, uh, transports, multi week lows, as you can see. Hardware beginning to break down, or as a, in other words, Apple. Let's take a look at Apple real quick. Yeah, see, Apple's kind of looking ugly in here. This is kind of a, a bit of a sloppy bow tie because it didn't make a tight crossing. But a bow tie, nonetheless, and proper order to the downside, nonetheless. And if you get bored, go in and play with Landry Light with the Apple, and I think you'd be pretty amazed. 
Semiconductors are a bit of a bummer. These dang things, I was kind of encouraged. I like the semis to confirm what we're seeing with the overall market. Some people like to look at the transports, that's fine. I think that's reminiscent, reminiscent of Dow theory or part of Dow theory. I prefer looking at the semis. I guess some people say it's the information superhighway or electronic superhighway, however you want to look at it. And I am a little concerned that the semis are now breaking down. Could see a bow tie to the downside pretty cool, pretty quickly in the semis. I almost say pretty cool, like I'm getting excited about that. But I do get nerdy, upside or downside. I don't care. Silver, the commodity, bouncing off its lows a little bit in here, but obviously in a what? Downtrend. Okay, let's take a look at the dollar real quick. Dollar's been pretty strong in here as of late. I guess this is encouraging the government to print more, right? <laughs> so, all right, Stuart. Stuart, let's talk about GDRX. Ooh, look at those funny looking charts. What is that? What is it? What are those charts? Got funny looking at this. What is that? Oh, I know what that is. It's a little baby getting squished by a sumo wrestler. All right. Stuart wants to talk about it. I like this stock. It it's got a little bit of, of issues, but I, I like it. Okay. And I've been looking at it. And if it's not on tonight's list, it should be. I'm a little hung up on this little bit of overhead supply in here, but I, I do find it interesting. You've got a nice trend higher. It's a persistent trend, Stuart. And then you got a nice deep pullback. And yeah, you could argue, well, it's back to this level here, but it's kind of more of a bottoming pattern. It's just not perfect. You know, it's not like the ideal perfect setup like a lit was a while back. It was kind of a little bit more a little more perfect back here. It's like, oh, there's your uptrend, there's your pullback, kind of textbook looking. So this one's a little all over the place, and that's why I'm not recommending it as official setup, but I do like it, and I'm very tempted to go in at the least and maybe do an intraday trade. You got plenty of volume. So I like it. There's a few caveats. It's gonna have some issues up here, but hey, if it gets to 50, 60 bucks a share in this market from 40 something, I guess it's a good problem to have. Task. Now, task I showed last week as a long. I did get stopped out. I guess I was bragging too much. I took it as a day trade. I think on this day here and made a little bit, a tiny bit, pizza party money. And I decided to keep 100 shares overnight. As I said last week when I showed it, you got to be real careful. You can only make so much intraday and you start taking stuff home and this thing drops 10 points the next day, you're in a lot of trouble. You can only make so much in a day trade. The real money's in the longer term trades. But I figured it wouldn't kill me because it looked good. It might have been on this day here. It looked good. So I took home 100 shares, wrote it up. But then I got stopped out somewhere in here. And I can show you the actual trades if you want to see them. But it was only 100 shares. Not a whole lot to get excited about. But up here towards a high, I was up like $2,000 on 100 shares so it's it's that's much better than a poke in the eye you do that a few times you make a little money asan asan any more we're catching up asan yeah that looks pretty good my only problem two problems one is it does have a little gap right here it's not the end of the world um I don't know if this is a somewhat foreign stock or whatever, if that would have anything to do with it. But it looks okay. Okay, I can't fault you for this one. It has had a pretty good run in here, and it's fairly accelerated in that run. One thing that would concern me a little bit is that it might be priced for perfection, especially being a big, thick stock or having a lot of volume, okay? So number one, the gap, but it's not the end of the world. We had crazy markets lately. Maybe we could overlook that. Sometimes I'm a stickler for that, and I'm like, eh, I, I'm having a hard time with it. If it fills the gap, then maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay. But the other thing, especially big, thick stock, it might be priced for perfection. And I'm, people ask me, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, what do I mean is, let's say it's way up here after running up 1,000%. 
or whatever it did. Let's say, let's just go from 30 on up. So whatever that is, 500%. And let's say they come out with earning reports. They blow the doors off the earning or whatever the saying is. They, they have amazing earnings. And then the market was looking for super duper amazing earnings. And then the stock tanks, okay? Trigger just above the close before the gap. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I would pass on it. You know, if we were in a rip roaring bull market, which we might not be in right now, obviously after showing all those things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to trigger in a little late, like way up here, you know, a day trade bounce maybe, intraday trade bounce. But I would be really careful with this one. I think I would just leave it alone. But I was watching one of Larry Williams' presentations and he was talking about the the whoops pattern it's like if you have a gap down and you feel that gap it's actually a positive thing okay so yeah maybe wait for the gap to get filled all right any any more questions any more stocks you guys want to talk about since we started the facebook group we're not getting as much um questions and that's fine that's fine okay what what oh what what is a possible short the market breaks down a little more Okay, Brett, that one, uh, the, the C one you're asking about, that's the setup going into tomorrow. That's one of those mystery charts. Congratulations, you figured it out. I would uh, wait wait for it to trigger, and then I would cash in your kids' college funds. Now, you're you're kind of young. I don't know if you have kids yet. And uh, I would put all my money into that stuff. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You figured it out. Okay, why is it possible short? But, yeah, that's a good, good uh, yeah, he's laughing, he's laughing, yeah. Yeah, that's a good look at stock. Uh, wait for an entry on that, okay? The only thing that concerns me a little bit here is I don't really like shorting stocks less than 500,000 shares, okay? You don't want to short a fairly thin stock, but it is 300 and something dollars a share. So I'm going to have to say, yeah, this thing, if this thing begins to, to bounce a little bit, it's a first thrust. This, I guess, was a micro first thrust up here. And then now it's going to be a, a first thrust. And the next support is at 275. So you've got, what's that, 50? Let's say it pulls back a little bit. You, you shorted at 375. You've got about 100 points to the downside. But it's a little on the thin side. And if ever you've gotten squeezed before, it sucks. <laughs> so you might be a little leery on those. And there are those of us who have to dip into the grandkids' college fund. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're all at that age. Huh? Although my girls don't seem to be uh, in a big hurry to give me grandkids, but uh, they're not married yet, so I guess I, I better not uh, pressure them. <laughs> all right, anything else? While we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. David says, thanks for teaching me to use discretion safely. I still am DATS at 750. Fantastic. I mean, that's music to my ear. I, I don't want to piss off anybody who's newer to the methodology or piss off anybody who's disciplined, okay, and they're following the discipline because longer term, that's going to pay off following the discipline. As you get more experience and you're, I hate to use the word playing with the market's money, but it's kind of like, okay, I've got good money in this. Let me give it a little bit of room here. I know I'm kind of bending the rules a little bit. You bend the rules, you don't break the rules, okay? You need to write that down. That's pretty good if I say so myself. And sometimes you can hang out with a position as I often talk about discretion. We talked a lot about discretion in the Q&A. If you get really bored, go watch the Q&A. It's in the gold members area. And then also, I'm sure somewhere under methodology, there's methodology, there's money and position management. There's holistic trader, and then there's one more. Oh, trading psychology. Those are the four courses. And holistic trade is a little bit of psychology, a little bit of money management, a little bit of methodology, kind of all rolled into one. But go in and watch the methodology one specifically, and then the Q&A. And as you get more and more advanced and more and more experienced, then you're going to find yourself using more and more discretion. Also, like last week, I talked about the poor gentleman who started the service at a really bad time. He missed a really good streak going in. He missed some really, really good trades going back a little further. He got in for some stinkers, and then he missed a couple of good trades going out when he left, soon after he left. And then also one or two of the stocks began to take off in the portfolio. So it's like 
somebody like that who's kind of like behind the eight ball, already losing money, it's kind of hard to lose a little money to make a little money by applying some of these discretionary techniques. If you've done this for a while and you've made good money and you're looking at a pretty good gain, then it's a little easier, especially if the position itself is, is still kind of like playing with the market's money, so to speak. It's a little bit easier to do some of these things. All right, last one. Last call. SRLP, no. No, because we're trend followers, right? And okay, first of all, it's super, 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 super thin. It imploded and now it's going sideways. Okay. So yeah, I would I would leave that alone. Don? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Yeah, Don used to not paying attention to the trend. So no, this is this has nothing to do with the trend. Leave that alone. You know, energy's going up right now. You could probably, that's for finding and marketing. That's not my favorite area of the energies. But you could probably find something. See, look at this one, okay? You know, that's going up, okay? Find something's going up. I mean, this one's kind of bottomed out. Looks like it's trying to go up. So with all these stocks going up, you don't want to deal in mediocrity and buy a stock that's going down. Yeah, Don used to come in every week and say and, and talk about stocks that were going down, specifically Ford. <laughs> but yeah, find something that's that's going up if you like the energies, and then broaden out to the overall energy. So look at look at this stock. Okay, this stock, Tarzan speak dad. Okay, but some of these in here actually looking pretty good, headed in the right direction. Okay. So leave that one alone. <laughs> Speaking of Don, yeah, poor Don. We should kick him out. Yeah, it's it's kind of been proven. Um, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, HV is a little low. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything with that. I know we're joking, but still. All right, going once, going twice. Well, again, thank you for watching and attending live tonight. Looks like we broke a record compared to where we were. So thank you guys and girls for showing up. I really appreciate that. Anything unanswered, of course, daviddavidlander.com. And for everybody here, who's in the Facebook group, just ask in Facebook and I'll I'll chime in. I'm a little behind, but I promise to chime in and spend a little time there this weekend. And I've been kind of lurking quite a bit. Everybody have a good weekend. If we don't talk again, I'll see the rest of you guys tomorrow on Facebook. Thank you so much.